welcome everyone in this previous video i showed you how we can do exploratory factor analysis using as as spss in this session i am going to show you how can we perform confirmatory factor analysis using mos so basically confirmatory factor analysis can be your second step if you perform efa first uh, however if you want to skip exploratory factor analysis uh, and you have some valid reason you can do that and you, this will so then this will be your first step confirmatory factor analysis the confirmatory factor analysis is comparatively easier compared to efa because the results are easier to manage and it is more theory driven means we don't go we start with data and we, with the confirmatory factor analysis the uh, advantage is we can establish the validity and reliability very easily so how we do it i will show you in this session how can we do all this process i'm not going to explain these slides because you can read in your own time and but i will explain you this is in my example part from here in the world file which i show, shared with you so this is you can start from here confirmatory factor analysis and this is how we can draw diagram and maps and basically up to here before the hypothesis testing so we want to get the reliability and validity through the confirmatory factor analysis so let's start for that we need to start with the mos graphics so we start mos graphics started and i want to see my uh, questionnaire in a minute So this is my questionnaire. Hopefully you should be able to see the questionnaire as well. So let me, yeah. So let's start from here. Uh, we need six items for PJ. So basically this is the interface of uh, confirmatory, uh, sorry, the MOs this is for if you have an observed variable which are already calculated this is for the unobserved variables and this is for unobserved variables and items and these are different buttons you can use for different purposes so let's start i want uh, it's a bit bigger let me start with a smaller eclipse so first we have the uh, six items for pj person job fit so let's see one two three four five six then we have three for po and seven eight for cc okay so again three one two three four five six seven eight and then we have seven and seven okay So I have created just the basics. This is how it works. I will use this rotate button to just make them in one side. Remember, I am just doing confirmatory factor analysis. I'm not doing anything else. So I will press this balloon button and this truck to move items so I can just put them in one sequence. So they looks neat. Okay, so it's here. And I will press this button so I can, yeah. So now I need to link the file. So the SPSS file, and most don't take any data input by itself. You have to link through Excel or uh, SPSS. So the way you do it, you go to files, data files, file name, some error coming, but no problem. Yeah, it should give, it should open a dialog and uh, from that dialog box so let me just browse the so i just want to use this easy example data once it shows here some number it means that the data is linked for so for example 365 means 365 respondents in this file so i just hit okay now the file is linked I want to save it as well at some name maybe I want to sh save it on desktop just for some uh, 
maybe I want to give it result CFA something like that okay so we just save now you go view and you press a variable in data set and now you can see the items basically these SPSS these uh, variables or items and of course all of them there is a data so we want to connect this in the MOS so the way I will do it I will just drag PJ1 here PJ2 here PJ3 here and accordingly so just a minute Of course there are some buttons available which you can use to do a bit of decoration so that your model looks uh, uh, aesthetically neat and it don't have okay I just missed three so I will move it next no problem so yeah there are some options available you can use to make your model looks neat and clean um, but that you get for example this paint button here you can use this one so it takes a bit of time and yes just last one so basically what we are doing is we are just adding all the items according to and we just want to see if they are really relating to themselves and not relating to any other factor uh, this is our concern here and this way we can check so we have done all of it let me just give it some names now you once you click on this circle means this is hidden variable we are measuring this hidden variable through this observed items for example six items per person job fit so I will just give it some name uh, okay and you can use this dialog box to change it a little bit like the font size and so on Re notice I'm not giving any space because I want to avoid that uh, in the names and you can use as I said uh, okay I press this button now I can take individual factor little bit further away from its because it's looking bit congested and yes and then uh, what I want to do is I want to press this button and I just want to select the eclipse, eclipse uh, the round ones so I have selected all of them let me zoom out a little bit one two three four five yeah, yeah. notice here this was my model this was my model so uh, but this one we have first we are doing CFA here so these are the the circle one is the error one so I will just use this plugin name an observed variable it automatically it will assign some number to it this is not our main concern uh, but also because I have selected all these five I will just use another plugin uh, draw covariance so this will covary all of them now you can use this button to so you see now I am doing bit of decoration but I don't want to waste too much time on that so I have done that now all I want to do is analysis properties and in output I want standardized estimates and modification indices because this is CFA and some other things if you want you can do it here like you can change the estimation methods and so on but uh, so far we don't need it and that's it we are good to run so we just go and analyze calculate estimates and yes model is run because you can see here the way we do it we go to view text output and here you can see the degree of freedom which is 424 and the uh, uh, yeah so the chi square is 1270 for this model and let's see if it's good or bad and we divide it by the degree of freedom 
so ideally it should be less than 3 which is uh, achievable in this case so yes all good here model fit there are different criteria for example RMR should be less than 0 0.05 which is achieved here the uh, Ramsey should be less than 0 0.08 which is achieved here the GFI for example it should be greater than 0 0.90 uh, which is not achieved here but we are close uh, and CFI also should be above 9 so some criteria are less than 0 0.05 or 0 0.08 some criteria are greater than 0 0.90 you can see details here in the uh, CFA section here so this is the model we drawn and this is the output um, you can copy it from here you can copy from here copy to clipboard and you can copy it in uh, new file okay it's like this but I don't want it uh, so and then how we will generate this table of course uh, we get the standardized factor loadings but we don't have the Cronbeck alpha we don't have reliability we don't have AVE and we don't have MSV this is remember important table for reliability and con so where is standardized factor loading let me show you here this is the results we go to view text output but we where I showed you model fit but also through estimates in estimates you will find standardized regression weight so for this one how we calculate that table for that one we need another uh, tool and this tool is available on James Gaskins uh, uh, James Gaskins uh, blog James Gaskin is one of a uh, expert in this area if you just google it James Gaskin I, I will not provide this tool to you because because of copyrights issue so we go here once you open the James Gaskin tool this is Excel sheet what you need to do is go to output this standardized regression table we copy and we paste here okay and here we need to paste correlation so again output and here correlation and you have to click on two three times to make it selected and again excel copy and paste here so we have pasted correlation table in james gaskins excel tool or whatever you call and the standardized regression weights now we just hit this button so it will create so you can see for example let me show you person job fit for example the com CR means composite reliability it is a like Cronbeck alpha it should be above 0 0.70 or 60 so this is for example 0.911 so notice in my example person job fit the composite reliability is 0.911 the in AV should be less than 0 .0, uh, greater than 0 0.5 and MSV or minimum maximum shared variance should be less than AVE for every respective variable so we, for example for person job fit the composite reliability we got the this is comp let me highlight it a little bit so composite reliability is 0.911 which I copied here this one then the AVE is 0 0.632 so you see this one here 0.632 and MSV is 0.168 so basically the idea is that composite reliability and Cronbeck alpha is same composite reliability is just a refined form of Cronbeck alpha and AVE should be greater than 0.50 as you can see for all variables my uh, AVE is above 0 0.50 if you have some problems in your data then it will be less than 0.5 then you have to fix it uh, what you have to do in that case uh, basically uh, let me show you we have to see which items have less than uh, let me show you standardize which item have le weak loadings for example this 0 0.73 point if this is weak if this is less than 0 0.5 you have to delete those ones we have to delete those items and then we can do the uh, we repeat the process and this way we can achieve this suitable so let me show for example all standardized loadings are almost 0 0.60 0 0.70 or above if they are weak the AVE will decrease because AVE is calculated based on these so that's why the 
uh, if these are weak then maybe we need to remove those items from the analysis we need to remove from here we need to delete and we need to repeat the process so this is how we can do it so this table i am sure basically these two shows your reliability if this is above 0.7 it shows your reliability this one shows your validity and the standardized loading also if this is above point uh, uh, what we can say uh, above point seven zero generally so it can be considered good and it is considered as the uh, <coughs> as the good indicator of the valid convergent validity so these two uh, columns they can tell you about convergent validity and these two columns they can tell you about the reliability and this is how you can interpret these ones okay so i and another one is discriminant validity so for discriminant validity it's also done here this part the bold values you can see this is actually square root of ave and the other right values are inter so you can just copy this one and you can copy paste into your world file and you can say this is based on Farnell and Lockers criteria. So if, for example, any Dyke bold value is greater than its other values in its respective column, then it means this is a problem. Then maybe you have a problem of discriminant validity. For so far here in this case, all bold values which are square root of AVE are greater than other values in its respective columns and even rows so there is no problem of discriminant validity here this is how you can write a bit of explanation for discriminant validity here i just reorganize it based on the sequence so i put person job fit organization fit first and other variables later but in here you will see its sequence is a bit different but no problem uh, again the other values are just the correlation so I hope you like it. Uh, so the summary is that we first in CFA, if you start with CFA, first we draw the model and then based on the model, you draw the model in MOS, you link the data files, you input all the items and we just do the analysis and from a result output, we look at the model fit values which I put here again the model fit values we put here these are like rmr gfi etc and this is the their recommended values as given by experts and also we take the from the output from the output we take the standardized weights and correlation and we use this toolkit to create these tables and we can then export these values back into our template or file world file and we can do a bit of explanation so these two tables tell you about your reliability and convergent validity and discriminant validity so if there is no problem it means uh, you're all uh, it's all green signal and you can go ahead with the next step which is hypothesis testing which i will explain in the next uh, which i will explain in the next video